to understand and know better what is happening in this side of the world. And the same thing we would like to do, trying to dig inside as much as possible into African culture and the African music. So the invitation is open to everybody that uh, wants to discover that uh, Latin American music is more than salsa, cha-cha-cha and dancing, you know. What motivates me to do the kind of music I do, it's the journey. It's the journey, the, the, the challenges in society. My name is Faizo Kiwewa. I am the founder and the artistic director of Baimba. Welcome to this year's edition of Doa Doa 2021. As you're all aware, we skipped our eighth edition to the ninth. Don't blame us. The world did skip a year, and so did we. Since 2008, we have organized festivals, trained stakeholders, and championed a performing arts market that has helped local artists to level with the rest of the world and the region. That's how Baimba has contributed to the vibrant art sector in Uganda. This edition of the Adoa is thought to be a special one, quite different from the previous years. We are running it for three months, from May to July. Uh, once a week, we'll host a speaker and one artist for 30 minutes. We are going to learn everything we can about them. Curated to give a glimpse of the performing arts industry, starting from right here, the future space for the Baimba Center for Visual and Performing Arts on Lunkulu Island, to the Reykjavik Opera House in Iceland, India, Chile, USA, and South Africa. We are going to meet virtually with our friends, some of the most amazing game changers from around the world. They are going to tell us about their spaces, their initiatives, the opportunities, and the possibilities. We thought this edition of Doa Doa would take us around the world. And we think we owe our audience what others have got to offer. And hopefully, they could be inspired. I'm very grateful to introduce you to our speakers. This edition of Doa Doa has been really getting to know our speakers and we took it to be a personal invitation. And I would like to introduce you to Mr. Amitabha from India. Namaskar. My name is Amitabha Bhattacharya. Uh, I'm in Calcutta, India. Uh, a social entrepreneur. 31 years of experience, education-wise, uh, an engineer passed out of IIT Kharagpur and uh, um, Gurukul Shevening, scholar uh, of, from London School of Economics. Ten years I was in software, returned from Silicon Valley, US in 99 and then started banglanatak.com. Mm, uh, social enterprise focusing on culture and development. How the rural traditional culture can alleviate people out of poverty, how it can 
move towards an inclusive development and slowly with time in 20 years what we see is that when pride and recognition returns and when the socio-economic gain happens in traditional artistic communities then they come forward participate in development and the village the artist and the art form get vibrant the art form gets safeguarded the artists are on their own and overall it's really a holistic development with this background let me go through a brief journey with you i will start with north bengal and then come to the south bengal the city of kolkata which is the cap which was the capital in the british uh, days but now capital of west bengal and as you know a little bit of history that in 1947 when india got independence that time in the name of religion india and pakistan two countries were born pakistan was born and india got and pakistan got separated from india and that time two states which were divided one is west bengal bangladesh which is bangladesh was part of pakistan used to be known as east pakistan and then became bangladesh in 1971 and another state which got impacted is punjab but coming to bengal you know we share many of the cultures the language with bangladesh because it's our neighboring space we were together but now we are separated starting north bengal we get bhawaiya the music of north bengal it's a wonderful music it's a music of daily lifestyle it's a music talking about the the essence of daily life when husbands go out to work women wait anxiously when their husbands are coming back when they return when there is flood what is the disaster what is the trauma people go through all these were part of are part of bhava yeah there are almost 4000 practice sing bhava yeah singers in alipur duar jalpaiguri kuch bihar districts these are all you can say forest fringe areas and called duars we have duars and hills in north bengal coming to hills that's the darjeeling kalimpong uh, these are basically the himalayas uh, foothills and uh, There are 16 communities, the indigenous communities, which have their own traditional art and culture, and they have their lovely music too, and the indigenous instruments and everything. When we come to middle of Bengal, we see the music has changed. There, the primary music we see the Baul music. The Bauls of Bengal, one can say, is the soul of Bengal. Now, uh, uh, Baul's basically like unlike other folk music, Baul is not a lifestyle music. It is a music with philosophy. It is not a religious music, but it is a spiritual. Music. It talks about crossing the barrier. It talks about no barrier of religion, no barrier of caste, class. It is rather it talks about respect. Our opinion include all, and it's a music of brotherhood. To me, it is a music of democracy. It is a music of socialism, and uh, music of mankind celebrating the pluralism and cultural diversity. There are almost two thousand three hundred practicing bowls in five districts of Bengal. 
in the middle of Bengal. Nadia, Murshidabad, Birbhum, Bardhaman and Bankira. If I come to south of Bengal, we see Bhatiali, the music of river, music of boat. And there, again, it's a lifestyle music. Your boat travels, you don't know when they will come back. The enjoyment with the enjoyment and the turmoil with the nature. And that is exactly the Bhakti Ali music. There are almost about 100 Bhakti Ali singers. Uh, with the motorized boat, now you don't get to hear that music in the boat anymore. But the community still practices, enjoys and leaves it at its leisure time. Coming to the west of West Bengal, which is primarily again a forest fringe areas and also the indigenous people again, the Santals and other indigenous people. There you get to see the Jhumur, the music, the song and dance. And also it's, it used to be known as Chotanakku Plateau. And also we see the Chow dance, the Chow, the mask dance. In 2011, uh, UNESCO accredited that with the masterpiece heritage of the world. So, and even Baul got it in 2008. It was a shared heritage between Bangladesh and uh, India. Uh, more or less, one can actually uh, uh, talk about these are the musical. And uh, from the handicraft side and the other culture side, uh, I'll say uh, Dokra, which is the mm, uh, metal. Uh, that's a very traditional uh, uh, space uh, that few artists, they live in Bordhuma and Bangura. That's one of the primary ones. Patachitra, the scroll painters, they still use natural color. That's the beauty. There were eight artists in 2004. Now there are 352 artists. I think that's something is very essential to understand that this is... Uh, no. What is our initiative? Our initiative, as I said, that you know, we are primarily focused on how to save these traditional art forms, but saving is not by us, rather by the community. So that means how to empower these communities to come forward with their traditional art and culture. And uh, when we do that, uh, so what we do? When we go to a community, uh, we try to build their capacity, we link them directly to the market. Directly, it is a very important word so that there is no one in between. And then thirdly, we do a lot of exchange collaboration and then we plant a village festival in their villages celebrating their art and culture uh, uh, and it should be calendarized. And that's how since 2004 we were started working but the village festivals we started planting in 2010. And till 2020 February we hosted, we did all the things and then onwards the corona situation took over worldwide, so we couldn't host that. Now, uh, um, uh, these are, you can say, the more or less uh, uh, the significance and uh, uh, is that, you know, these are significant uh, art forms and uh, uh, instrument-wise, dotara uh, uh, is a very, very important instrument uh, in Bengal. Uh, um, of course, we have the bamboo flute and uh, um, the dhol. And the city of Calcutta, uh, which got influenced by all the music uh, and everything, and uh, and also the Tagore's uh, songs are a big part because Rabindranath Tagore, the first non-European Nobel laureate, is part and parcel of our culture, and his influence on the on uh, our part is uh, quite quite uh, noteworthy really. It's a place, Kolkata is a place of culture, m including music, poetry, film, uh, everything. And uh, we really uh, uh, appreciate the contribution of, the, of those uh, uh, people in our life. Calcutta is a very socialist in nature, Bengal overall. It's a very left orientation. And uh, because of, uh, again, our history, Chaitanya, in the Bhakti Kalt movement, he talked about uh, remove the caste, religion, rather come forward. It's again from where Baul got influenced. So it's a very orientation is a little different than other parts of, uh, um, I'll say, India. And uh, uh, um, 
uh, one very important part i will say the collaboration the because that's really because uh, historically when gandhi ji uh, in india spoke about nationalism rabindranath tagore talked about universalism so that theory actually influenced bengali's calcuttans very well so we following the path of that we believe in universalism so since 2009 we have been hosting collaborations and uh, we invite international musicians artists designers and to work with our we host the local part and uh, they do come oh, i think more than 300 artists uh, uh, have uh, a little more than that because we have been hosting our uh, flagship festival sur jahan since 2011 so 10 years and uh, this 10 years uh, five to six bands each so overall i think we brought other than sur jahan we did a lot of collaboration so maybe 355 to 400 artists have come even our artists have traveled abroad i want to request all the listeners that please do take this uh, as a very important opportunity come to india come to we work primarily in west bengal western rajasthan the desert where there are beautiful musicians and art forms and traditional art forms and uh, come to goa so these three places will be happy to host collaborations and i'm confident if you come uh, we will be good host you will be enjoying collaborating with our artists and you will be creating a new relationship which i'm sure where you will learn they will learn and both of you will co-create and rights will remain with both of you and we can be a very positive catalyst in ensuring that so uh, with this small note uh, my uh, uh, urge my request uh, to all of you invitation to all of you that you know uh, please do keep in touch and uh, check our uh, sites we give always the calls www.banglanatak.com www.bncmusical.co.in now there are many sites but this too will be helpful and uh, come forward stay with us we'll meet the other traditional masters interact with them learn new things co-create enjoy Indians wants uh, Indians creativity, and I'm sure that is going to be a good way forward. And we want to learn from you too. That's a very very important part. And uh, one more thing is that you know our festival, uh, which after 2020, we will be helping, we will be working, we will be together. we shall overcome and we can be part of a much more peaceful world than we are in today it is a journey not of mine it is a journey of ours and i invite to be a part of this journey thank you As you've heard from our speaker, I would now like to introduce you to the artist of the week. This year, we really tried to focus on getting to know the artist, and I would like to introduce you this week the Entenga musical drums from the Central Buganda. My name is James Isavidi. I am a doctor of music education i graduated in april 2019 in uh, a doctor of music education at um, oakland university rochester michigan in the united states and tenga music is actually uh, publicly known to be royal music that is performed in the palace and for the kabaka or oh. if you might wish king of buganda kingdom amanya kanga zedi vingi stone mushishimu kalazi mukalazi dia tika mushishe banzala mushisaita angombe yo ntenge yo yajende kabaka tabagu ngava sese kwa kaba 
my full name is Professor Sempeke John. When I start talking about music, I don't want to stop because it has made me who I am. I started playing music when I was nine years old because my dad and my, had a group, and the group is through existence. It's called Aboluganda Kwagalana, uh, which he started in 1945, and up to today, I'm still learning it, although he passed away. As a student of music when I was growing up, I read about it. And I was interested to know what it is. Then at one point I saw in a book that was written by Edward Galab Zimukasa, anthology of uh, Uganda musical instruments. And I found a picture of uh, a line of drums with the people holding the sticks that are carved. And that I had never seen in the Busoga. So I thought I should listen to this music somehow. They are royal 12 tuned drums plus three of them, which makes them 15. They are prayed layery in the palace, and they are especially for the king. Once you hear Ntenga playing, then the king is in the palace. My dialect alone connects me to these drums and forces me to find out more about them. Could they be connected to my own you know, heritage, to my ethnic society? And um, in the process of working with the Musisi, he actually kept on insisting that Entenga came from Busoga. It was brought by one of the early kings of Uganda. I contacted a friend who happened to be a director of Vayimba. He's called the Faiso Chiwewa. For those of us who might know him, I said, um, he actually talked to me that, you know, James, I'm having an event of Doa Doa, which I had, I mean, uh, known of even years before. And I said, uh, yes, talk about Doa Doa. I have something that would be exciting. We have revived the King's Entenga music, but I doubt that I even have a chance to meet the King. First of all, I'm from Busoga. How do I go through the processes? And I'm a teacher, really. I, I am re, I'm focused on this music more than I'm focused on other big things, including the politics of our cultures and our nation and things like that. I'm just, I want to be a simple citizen who is free to do my things. And so um, he, he was so receptive and we, worked through, we walked through the budget and said, I will give the money. It was a bit high for, from my thinking. And um, so they came out to perform at Doa Doa in the National Theatre. They were actually playing opening act of the Doa Doa event. Um, and so somehow this made it known that actually there are some Antenga players. Following that Doa Doa event, there was a coronation ceremony for the king and uh, some of Baganda leaders, Baganda kingdom leaders said, by the way there were Ntenga performers in Doa Doa, we have to find them. Each tribe has got its own culture and so these are for, you know, Boganda and uh, we are related a little bit with Basoga. The king 
actually recognized that the Entenga plain that he was looking at was much the same as the Entenga plain he had seen played in the palace for when his father was the king. He actually said, um, I want to thank the Entenga players because they played the music in exactly the same way as those Entenga players uh, who played in the palace those days. Going back to look at this music and what makes it really unique, for me it is the interlockingness of these skins. And by the way, when it plays and you're very near, you may not really feel the beauty of the music. You have to stand a distance away and you hear it like you're listening to something on a hill. And then you say, wow, this is amazing. Most of the royal musical instruments are perishing. I wouldn't like to die before these are being implemented back in the palace because the Entenga should be in the Paris and should be there. We are going, but the problem.com is causing a lot of problems, you know. When you tell someone, Let's, can you play, they say, no, I cannot play the big, they, instead, they, 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 instead of calling them drums, they say, I, I don't want to play the big goma. This music has cultural significance in Uganda, and for me, that is the starting point. I really need to respect the context, the cultural context with it in which this music was birthed. So in revitalizing this music expression, the intention is not to sell it to the world as me. But I have had uh, challenges with the young people who learned the music. One of them actually said one day, but I am the music. So why did he say that? He said it because I was trying to suggest that we keep within the confines of the cultural institutions that claim responsibility of this expression. My argument has and still continues to be that the kingdom is interested in this cultural expression and I really need to respect the kingdom. I'm a believer. <laughs> so wherever I go, I worship, okay? You know, uh, I'm happy, like my, 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 my brother Kabuza. You know, we, are, if you find us playing the, you know, the, the spiritual songs on a xylophone, if you are tempted, <laughs> you can worship <laughs> on a xylophone. Not only me, we got uh, friends like uh, Okirol, and uh, you know, we got our queer name, which we call ourselves, but I won't say it, but it was <laughs> jokely. We <laughs> say, Come on, come on, Mr. K let's play, and then we kick it off. Cultures don't die sometimes. They can only be held a little bit, but as long as they are spirit, they find their way back into the domain of existence. Um, I think I would like to continue my contribution to the heritage of this world. Um, the diversity of mankind is the beauty of this planet. And in my view, if the different cultural expressions are given a vent to exist within their power and into the public domain, I think we have a better world. We have a world where we understand one another. It is these differences which help us to see who we are. And it is the same differences which help us to resolve and come to an understanding. Uh, I'm happy because I invented something which people, which took a long time. You know, when presidents or whatever other people comes, they think when we talk of gun salutes. But for us, I invented something called the drum salute for the king.
you know, on every year which he adds up when he's still alive, that's the, the, that's the rhythm we play. Because last time was 27 years, and we banged 27 Bram Sariot. My name is James Isabire. I would like to invite all of you in every corner of the world to come and enjoy Entenga music of the Baganda people during this Doa Doa 2021. Thank you so much for joining this week's show, Doa Doa 2021. I hope you had some fun and got some inspiration. Uh, if you have any comment, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave your comment or our Facebook page, Twitter or Instagram. We'll definitely get back to you. We are very grateful and until next week, I remain your host, Faiz Okiwewa from Bayimba and the Doa Doa team. Keep it Doa Doa 2021. to understand and know better what is happening in this side of the world. And the same thing we would like to do, trying to dig inside as much as possible into African culture and the African music. So the invitation is open to everybody that uh, wants to discover that uh, Latin American music is more than salsa, cha-cha-cha and dancing, you know. What motivates me to do the kind of music I do, it's the journey. It's the journey, the, the, the challenges in society. I am the founder and the artistic director of Bayimba. Welcome to this year's edition of Doa Doa 2021. As you're all aware, we skipped our eighth edition to the ninth. Don't blame us, the world did skip a year, and so did we. Since 2008, we have organized festivals, trained stakeholders, and championed a performing arts market that has helped local artists to level with the rest of the world and the region. That's how Baimba has contributed to the vibrant art sector in Uganda. This edition of Doa Doa is thought to be a special one, quite different from the previous years. We are running it for three months, from May to July. Uh, once a week, we'll host a speaker and one artist for 30 minutes. We are going to learn everything we can about them. Curated to give a glimpse of the performing arts industry, starting from right here, the future space for the Baimba Center for Visual and Performing Arts on Lunkulu Island, to the Reykjavik Opera House in Iceland, India, Chile, USA, and South Africa. We are going to meet virtually with our friends, some of the most amazing game changers from around the world. They are going to tell us about their spaces, their initiatives, the opportunities, and the possibilities 
we thought this edition of Doa Doa would take us around the world. And we think we owe our audience what others have got to offer. And hopefully they could be inspired. And our second speaker is Mark Ball from Manchester, the United Kingdom. to everyone at the Bayama Foundation and welcome from Manchester and Manchester International Festival. I'm Mark Ball, the Creative Director here at MIF, where I'm responsible for working on the festival, but also developing the artistic programme for the factory, which is something I'm going to talk to you about a little bit later. And it's really wonderful to be here today, albeit by video. The history of Manchester International Festival is really tied in to the history of Manchester. Manchester is known as a city of invention. It's where the Industrial Revolution started. And ever since then, the city has been making new things, from it being the birthplace of the trade union movement to the starting point of computing. Manchester is always about newness. It calls itself the original modern city. And so when the festival started in 2007, it really wanted to respond to that and to create a festival that uniquely would focus on new work, so everything that happens in Manchester International Festival, which happens every two years, has its world premiere in Manchester. We give an invitation for artists to be really adventurous, to come to the city, to, to try out new things, and to show things here first before taking it around the world. And we're particularly interested, with that spirit of invention, in really pushing the new. So much of the festival is about bringing artists together from different forms, different traditions, together into a collaborative space so that they can really test out new ideas and create new types of theatre, dance, opera and visual arts to really try and think about and imagine what the art of the future might look like. So the festival takes place every two years. It takes place across the whole city of Manchester. But at its DNA, at its heart, is the creation of that new work that I talked about with artists from different forms coming together to create really, really new and exciting things. And just to give you some examples to illustrate that. Recently, we worked with the amazing uh, Oscar-nominated actor Riz Ahmed to create a project called Lo The Long Goodbye, where Riz really wanted to create a piece of work that looked at the impact of racism on immigrants into the UK uh, and brought together not just his form of acting and theatre, but brought that, brought that together with dance, with visual culture, with digital culture, to create a truly unique piece. Uh, more historically, we invited the amazing actor and director, Kenneth Branagh, to reimagine what Macbeth might look like in a beautiful old abandoned church in the heart of Manchester, creating a really epic but very intimate performance that allowed Kenneth Branagh to really play with the form of theatre making. Another landmark Manchester International Festival project, and one from its very first festival, was Monkey Journey to the West, which was a collaboration between the Chinese director Zhen Zhen, the pop musician Damon Alburn, and the illustrator and visual artist Jamie Hewlett. And together, they brought a whole new perspective on that very traditional, legendary story of, of Monkey Journey to the West, really bringing together the traditions of Chinese circus, choreography, design and popular music to create something that felt entirely new, that started life in Manchester and then went and travelled around the world. And to bring us up to date with a more recent project, we worked with the grime artist Skepta. Skepta was really wanting to try and create a new experience for audiences, a much more intimate live music event. I think he was fed up with playing gigs where audience members would watch him by holding up their mobile phones and would watch him mediated through a screen. So he wanted, as I say, to create something that felt much more immediate, much more intimate. So we worked with him to, to create and design an incredible set, to work with technologists, 
uh, to build us a visual world that Skepta created uh, on this beautifully designed stage, with only a few people, a thousand people crowded around him, to create again an entirely new type of live music event, where mobile phones were in fact banned. We took them off the audience at the start of the gig. So the Bayamba Foundation asked me about the sacred art forms of Manchester, and I guess if this city is defined by one thing, other than perhaps football, it's designed by music. This is a city that has given birth to a hugely great musical tradition that actually goes back you know, over a century from the establishment of the Halle Orchestra. Uh, we now have the BBC Philharmonic or Orchestra here as well, but more recently, really since the 1970s, an incredible expo explosion of popular music in the city from Joy Division, New Order, The Stone Roses, Oasis, Manchester really being a, a cradle of great musical talent that's gone and been exported around the world. So in terms of music, which has really been at the heart of the festival, we've worked with some of the great artists from across the UK and from around the world. Artists like New Order, uh, who I've referenced earlier, but we got them to actually collaborate with the visual artist Liam Gillick to really think about what a collaboration would mean for a live music event that brought together visual arts and music. We were at Bjork, but again, asking her to do something new, to imagine what a Bjork experience might be like in virtual reality. We were with Abedou and Mariam, bringing them to the Whitworth Art Gallery in Manchester. So music has always been a really integral part of the festival. And it's one of the things that will really drive the programme in our new home, the factory. One of the things that Faisal asked me to talk about were the opportunities for artists from East Africa to engage with the festival. We, we've had a, you know, a tradition of working with artists from across Africa. I mentioned Abadou and Mariam. Uh, we're working currently with the South African choreographer, Greg McComa. Uh, and actually, really excitingly, we're developing a long-term relationship with the amazing Homecoming Festival in Lagos, a festival that celebrates the best of Nigerian and West African design, art, culture, fashion and music. And we'll be bringing that to Manchester in this year's festival as a start of a longer term relationship. And we'd love to work more with artists from East Africa as well. And we're always open to ideas. We're always open to collaboration. You know, so please, if, you do, if you've got ideas for what you think might work in the festival or relationships that you think you might want to build with us in Manchester, please just get in touch. We, we really do want to be open to new ideas. So I'm going to end by talking about two really exciting things. The first is that in a year which we've all faced huge difficulty and huge uncertainty, we're absolutely delighted to be able to present another edition of Manchester International Festival this July, made and created through all of the difficulties and all of the restrictions of COVID. But we've worked hard to pull together artists from the UK and some international artists to create a really special moment over the first 18 days in July in Manchester. A moment that will bring people back into the city, that will allow them to congregate and to reflect on the year that's just gone, to think about what's happened, but also importantly, to really find moments of collective joy. Something that I think we've all been longing for over the past difficult 12 months. And finally, the thing that I'm actually working on most is the factory. The factory will be Manchester International Festival's new year-round home. It's being built right in the heart of Manchester and it will give a year-round invitation for artists to be their most adventurous, where we'll be able to provide artists with new commissions and new opportunities to present their work, not just every two years in the festival, but now in an incredible new space every day of the year. And I'm thrilled that we're only 18 months away from opening the factory. And it's a really, really unique space. It's a space where we're going to invite artists to be their most ambitious, to make work of scale. I, I was incredibly excited the other day to be able to go for the first time in over a year because of COVID onto the factory site and to stand inside that building uh, and to have seen it develop and grow which I've only been able to do virtually or by looking at photographs, but to see it in the space and to understand its scale and its possibilities, this really is an incredible building that's going to allow artists to create hugely ambitious work of scale in a purposely designed building. So we're really excited about the potential for artists from all over the world to come and be their most creative, not just in the festival, but in the factory as well.
And July, we really look forward to welcoming you to Manchester, whether that's in person or online. And you can catch up with lots of things that are going on in the festival via our website. There'll be a lot of work that's shown online. So if you can't join us in Manchester, please do log on and you'll be able to engage with performances and all sorts of activities and really get a sense and flavour of the festival. So I really do hope that you join us then. And as I say, we really are open to great ideas, to great conversations about how you might want to work with us. So please do, at any time, get in touch. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's edition of Doa Doa 2021 virtual docu-series. As you've heard from the amazing speaker, now you're going to get to know the artist. This week's In Focus artist is Jemima. She is one of the greatest performers of this country, and that's why she got herself the name The Gradiator. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. Am I you can, can. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Doa Doa. I'm called Jemima Sanyu. I'm from Uganda, Kampala. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I'm a singer. Uh, I started doing music when I was still a very little girl in church. Jemima, uh, people call me the stage gladiator. <laughs> You can't say that now when I'm talking, <laughs> but when I get on stage, I become furious, yeah? I have this energy, I have this passion, uh, and that is what makes me a gladiator. It's like a battlefield when I'm on stage, but I, I don't do it alone. It's no, normally with a team that I work with. <laughs> what has been my musical journey from childhood. Um, I would say uh, it wasn't an easy one, but my mom kept on pushing me. My mom was a, a singer in church, in a Catholic church, and she used to sing with us at home. Every time she would get moody, every time she would get happy, she would just make a choir. <laughs> she had a choir of five uh, little beautiful babies and I was the firstborn. So most of the times, if she wasn't taking the lead, she would tell me, ah, Jemima, please take the lead. And there was some simple song that she used to sing for us. Holy, 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 holy. So that grew, uh, it grew in me. I, I grew up singing every day. We used to sing every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, after, uh, from home, I would go to school. Trust me, I was always in choir 24-7. Uh, church, I was always in choir. I was in the worship team. I was uh, uh, singing in a church called JCC, Ginger Christian Center. Way back in Ginger, uh, when I went to university, I did something different. Uh, that was computer networking. I did a, a short course, yeah. Then I tried to look for jobs around. Things failed. 
So that's, that is when uh, my, my husband came in, my husband, uh, producer Legend P. He told me, but Jemima, you've tried everything and things have failed. Why don't you try singing? Why don't you take it to a professional level? You know, so uh, I got in touch with his brother, his brother, actually two of his brothers, producer Henry Chiwa and producer Steve Jean. So they kept on pushing me. They kept on helping me. They gave me uh, training and uh, I ended up this professional <laughs> singer. Uh, we also started a band. It was a very simple band in the beginning, but later on it kept on growing. Uh, I, I, I got to meet people like Mr. Faisal Chimewa. Uh, he, he has really been a, a great man in my journey. So many people, but Mr. Faisal Chiwewa has really done a great job. I've, I've, I've worked with people like producer Henry Chiwewa, producer Legend P, producer Steve Jean. Actually, it's in the family. <laughs> and my brother, uh, producer Big Nash. I give it to you, give me, give me love, then I give it to you. Give me, give me love, I give it to you. Big Nash Jemima, I give it to you. Hey! What motivates me? Um, there is a lot that motivates me, but mostly it's uh, the people around me. The people around me. If you hurt me today, trust me, I'll write a good song about pain. <laughs> Seriously, uh, if you show me love, you know, if you hug, just a hug is enough for me to write a song. Yeah, um, politics at times, you know, where I come from, uh, it's just the daily, the daily life, uh, the things that I look forward to as a musician. There are so many. <laughs> there are so 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 many I kept on saying oh I want to be bigger than uh, Angelique Kijo since I was a little kid I want to be bigger than this lady who sang Malaika Malaika Nakupenda uh, I used to look at such women and they used to motivate me but I wanted to be more up to now I still want to be more even when you look at my performances Trust me, I'm more. Cuttings and nowhere to say, yeah, yeah, I'm a young girl. No, go no more, no, but to be then a cover. Babies and nowhere to say, yeah, yeah, I'm a young girl. No, go no more, no, but to be then a cover. Sunday was supper too. The tenant I had day at Chicago. Never call a woman, never seem to be a Uh, seriously, Jemima Sonia believes in God. First of all, I grew up in a godly family. We used to pray every day, morning, evening. Uh, there was a time uh, I, I had to leave home. We had some issues, you know, how families, you know, my mom had to separate with my dad. They had to separate and uh, they took me to a pastor's home. Trust me, we would pray every day. So uh, that really made me grow uh, as a person, spiritually. It really helped me uh, in the way I behave, treat other people, yeah. Uh, I, in everything that I do, I have to make sure people see God. They see God. How do they see God? By, by doing good, doing good. So I believe in God. I grew up in a, a very terrible family, you know. My dad was very, very, very tough. He used to beat us almost every day. Every day. Imagine every day, even without any reason. He'll just find you there sitting, doing nothing, and he'll just ask you, what are you doing, you know? <laughs> and in case you didn't have any answer for that, he would beat you to death. He would make sure he first sees blood coming out of you. So that really brought pain, you know? It brought pain into my heart. Not me alone, even my siblings. Every time I open up my voice just to sing, 
I run away from all that pain. That's why I give it my all. That is where I get the strength from. How was he on the truth in my eyes? The old of me, they got you blind. Hey! How I was brought up, the pain I went through just because mom and dad were not happy together, you know, and I had to suffer, you know, and being the firstborn. I had to make sure I'm in between these wars, you know, in between mom's wars, dad's wars, the in-laws. The, it was always chaos, chaos, chaos everywhere. So uh, it really made me grow into this strong, you know, strong, understanding, reasonable girl, you know. So, and up to now, I still feel the pain, you know, because it's, it's hard. Yeah? It's hard to see your mother somewhere different, your father somewhere different. And it's you who has to, you know, keep on pulling them together. You know, no, we have to do this. We have, you know, so that really drives me, you know. So every time I sing, I just run away from that pain. Um, actually, I normally don't talk about this story. This is the first time it's coming out. <laughs> it's the first time. Uh, but I really love people so every time i'm performing i just want to spread that love out of me to the world you know out of me to the audience out of me to everyone watching out of me to the little girls you know because i don't want people i know people have different challenges they have different families they have different parents you know uh, some of us were not lucky but trust me many of the girls are also have not been lucky so what I normally do is I don't want to bring that pain to them. So that is what I normally do. I, I just spread the love. This is a special song coming from Jemima Sanyo. I want to dedicate it to everyone watching Doa Doa. Uh, it talks about love that cannot just go away. Broken love, tears, scars. But you know, you have to keep on holding yourself to that person, you know? And I would really want to dedicate it especially uh, to the girls, to the women who have been through what I've been, who have gone through what I went through when I was growing up with my father, my tough, tough, tough father. Because I still love him. I still respect him, you know? He's my father. I can never get another father. Okay. This love is so tall, it gets us high. We touch the sky. These tears and the scars are too strong, they rewind the time. This love is so tall, it gets us. We touch the sky. These trees and the scars are too strong. They rewind the time. Ni wana fako barele shaye. Ili anzaje, ili waje. Jemima loves Beyonce. I love Beyonce because uh, of her energy, her performance, her voice, you know. She touches my heart, you know. Uh, I would really feel good to perform with that woman, you know. Having that Ugandan energy eh, joined together with, you know. <laughs> I love Beyonce. Actually, even when you check... Uh, my gallery it's full of that lady her photos her videos i just love beyonce uh i want i won't specify 
that this is the kind of uh, stage that I want to be on, you know? I just want to give myself room. Whatever comes my way is what I go with, you know? I just have to keep on being hopeful, you know? The, the stages are too many. There are too many. <laughs> but trust me, whichever stage comes my way, trust me, Jemima can tear it down. Uh oh! <laughs> Is the world ready for me? It has to be. Am I ready for the world? <sighs> Come on. <laughs> I'm ready for the world, you know. Uh, during uh, the COVID-19 season, yeah, actually it was a dead year. Because most of the venues where we were working from had to close down. The hotels, the, the restaurants, the, the bars, you know, the stages, Bayimba, we didn't do Bayimba, we didn't do Doa Doa. Uh, it was a lot. And uh, there were some tours that we, uh, we normally went to. Uh, they were all closed. Everything was shut down. Uh, what I, I decided to do was turn my energy to, to the studio, you know. So we recorded songs. We recorded songs. Uh, I have songs like bandage njagala bandage you know and it's my husband the producer uh, who produced it uh, i also have songs like give me love give me love uh, that was uh, my brother big nash who produced it you know so far i have two producers working on me legend p and big nash they are really putting in a lot because they know what I can do <laughs> and they love me you know they 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 want the best from me and I really appreciate that you know where can people find my music my music is everywhere <laughs> uh, you can go to YouTube yeah I have all the videos there all the audios there all my social media platforms you know uh, Facebook Mm, Twitter, Instagram, you know, SoundCloud, everywhere. Trust me, we, we try to put all the music out there for people to listen. Thank you so much for joining this week's show, Doa Doa 2021. I hope you had some fun and got some inspiration. Uh, if you have any comment, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave your comment or our Facebook page, Twitter or Instagram. We'll definitely get back to you. We are very grateful and until next week, I remain your host, Faizo Kiwewa from Bayimba and the Doa Doa team. Keep it Doa Doa 2021. to understand and know better what is happening in this side of the world. And the same thing we would like to do, trying to dig inside as much as possible into African culture and the African music. So the invitation is open to everybody that uh, wants to discover that uh, 
Latin American music is more than salsa, cha-cha-cha, and dancing, you know. What motivates me to do the kind of music I do, it's the journey. It's the journey, the, the, the challenges in society. Welcome to this week. Our speaker is Reem Kasim from Alexandria, Egypt. Hi, my name is Reem Kasim and I'm a cultural manager and producer and cultural researcher currently based in Abu Dhabi. I'm also the founder of Agora for Arts and Culture. And Agora is a cultural institution based in Alexandria, Egypt that works on community involvement through education, production, dissemination of arts and culture. I'm also one of three co-founders for the virtual platform Basita.live. And Basita is a virtual theater or a virtual venue, and as well an income generating platform for the creative and cultural sectors worldwide that has been created during the past week, past year of the pandemic. During the recent years, we were most of the people in the creative industries were discussing alternative funding models and were also discussing how they can be self-sustained financially through their activities. Most of the, most of the institutions are heavily depending on uh, in international funding or even local funding and funding mainly for projects. However, there are very, very few cultural organizations that are self-sustained uh, financially through their activities or through their earned income. And for this reason, when all our work moved to the online platforms, it became even more challenging for artists, uh, creative freelancers and cultural institutions to generate income through the virtual platforms. And of course, the virtual platforms, they come with their own challenges like copyright, um, uh, 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 security, online security, etc. So during this period, we thought, uh, the co-founders of Posita.live, that creating a platform that is safe and secured, that, that also helps the artists and the institutions worldwide to share their online content in a secured way, while also being able to charge their audiences a fee slash a ticket, would be very helpful during this critical time. And that's why immediately in April last year, April 2020, we started interviewing artists and having conversations with different institutions worldwide to understand their needs if such a virtual platform would uh, be become a reality. And from that, we started developing Bosito.live and launched it in May 2020 as a test version. And from May till August, we started adjusting the platform as we saw suitable after consultations with artists. So we heard from filmmakers, we heard from performers, theater makers, dancers, what are the features and uh, the elements, the technical elements that would help them uh, take their art and present it worldwide while also being able to have a sustainable automated income from what they present. Then in August, we officially launched the platform with the first event. It was on 4th of August. And since then, we've hosted almost 25 events so far, ranging from musical events, film screenings, dance performances, theater performances, and talks as well. And we have noted that uh, uh, audiences, of course, audiences, uh, they are still not used to paying for creative and cultural content. While they all, 
are fine with uh, a paying for mainstream content on platforms such as Netflix uh, or, uh, for example, Spotify or Apple Music or other uh, um, different uh, platforms that uh, present uh, mainstream content. And still, the culture is new for audiences to start accepting the fact that also artists and cultural um, institutions they deserve the same support that the main content the mainstream content receives therefore during this period we are heavily working on uh, um, uh, audience awareness and awareness in general that artists should be equally supported that the independent artists and independent scene and uh, uh, creatives who present cultural content in general, no matter what the discipline is, they also deserve the, the same support that other uh, creatives from the mainstream sector receive. And uh, uh, to do that, uh, we have launched several campaigns and we have launched several info sessions and we are still planning to do more. So the way Bosita.life functions, it's it's very easy. It's it's uh, Bosita actually means simple. It's an Arabic word, but also resonates to different languages. And its translation is simple. Uh, so the artist or the institution, they they go on Bosita.live, the the platform, and they create an account, a personal account. There are three types of accounts: an account as an artist. So a musician, a filmmaker, or uh, even a visual artist, an individual artist can create an account. And there is also the venue or an institution account. So if, uh, if it's a, a cultural center, if it's a band or a festival, or uh, any type of institution or a venue can create another account. Uh, we also have a third type of account for audiences. So also audiences create, create accounts. And uh, uh, creating an, an account is very simple and straightforward. They just fill in uh, some information, a quick uh, synopsis, a bio, a photo, a profile photo, and social media links, and that's it. Once the artist or the institution, they create their account on Bosita.live, then they, have, they gain access. They have a username and password from which they can log into the platform and start creating their events. And creating an event on Basito.life is also very simple. They start also filling in the information of the event, the event name, the event type. And on Basita, we have two types of events. We have the live events that are happening in real time, and we have the premieres. And the premieres are all the pre-recorded content. And then they fill in the, um, the discipline. Is it a concert? Is it a film screening? The genre? They choose their ticket price. So audiences from anywhere in the world, when they log in, they see the currency of the, of the place or the country they are logging in from. And they see also the time zone of the place they are logging in from. And then the artist also adds the synopsis about the performance, the, the, the photo. And then if, if it's a premiere, then they, they have to upload the content, if it's a film or a filmed con, uh, concert. And if the content is not ready, the artist can also skip the step and upload the content anytime later, but it has to be within 48 hours before the premiere date. And then the artist submits the event for approval. It goes to us for review. We review the event details, and then we uh, approve it and confirm. Once the event is approved, then it appears uh, publicly on our homepage, and the artist can start promoting the link. People can start buying tickets, and it works really uh, in an automated way. Uh, uh, also, there are several different features that the platform offers. So, for example, for films, there, there is the option of uploading subtitles. Also, for all the events, there is the option of geo-blocking. We understand that some people sometimes they want to make their content available in some regions or some countries and some countries not. 
for simply for simple reasons like for example they don't own the distribution rights in in certain regions and they only own it for certain countries so this feature is also there there is a feature to make the event um with invitation only for a limited number of people you can make your event uh, uh, um, available for ticket unlimited ticket purchase or you can make it only available for a certain number of people if you want to keep it for a small uh, number of audiences and of course the content is very secured it, we use two types of security first of all encryption technology so the content is encrypted and second on our web version, we use watermarking technology. So of course, anyone who access the content, who buys a ticket has to have an audience account on Basita.live. And therefore, when, when the audience are watching the content, their IP address and email address appear on the screen uh, as a watermark every five minutes randomly. So anyone who wants to um, uh, screen record uh, or try to infringe the content in any way, uh, the content owner will be able to know who this person is. And uh, also the platform offers details, detailed statistics to the creative users, the artists and the institutions. So whenever an, an, an artist creates an event, they in their uh, um, panel, their events panel, they can see statistics such as who are the people who bought the tickets, uh, their demographics, their information, which from which country, which nationality. And we, while creating the platform, we thought that this is very, very necessary during this period when we moved to the online platforms and our audiences are beyond the geogra geographical uh, um, uh, uh, place or boundaries we are in, we have to understand more from where, where are our audiences from, so that we can also enhance our outreach and marketing efforts. So the statistics are also downloadable in a PDF format, and we have the advanced statistics that uh, also give the artist the contact details, the email addresses of his audiences. And this is something that is written in our terms and conditions, where the audiences, they give, they approve and allow the platform to share the email addresses with the artist, since they have bought a ticket for his or her event. Our observations so far, after hosting nearly 25 events during the past nine months, uh, are that um, we, we've seen that audiences, they have the tendency to pay for the online content. And this is uh, uh, when the audiences are from the loyal followers or the, the, um, the fans of the artist. Uh, people who don't know the artist are less likely to commit to paying for an, uh, um, uh, an online, a ticketed online event. But also we noticed that theater, dance, and film are selling more than music. But we haven't hosted a lot of musical events so far. We haven't hosted uh, new performances so far, uh, um, uh, new musical performances so far. So also we don't have enough data to uh, confirm our uh, analysis. However, uh, from our initial findings, we thought that because music is widely more available online and there are so many, uh, uh, music platforms such as Spotify and Remy and other. Uh, that's why audiences have lots of alternatives. However, we are also going to examine again when we have a new production on the platform or a new collaboration, something interesting that is not available on other platforms. But for film and theater and dance, we've noted that people are more uh, um, interested to pay for such a content, especially um, people, for example, we hosted lots of uh, events from Egypt. So lots of Egyptians living abroad, uh, they were very keen to uh, watch those independent films or theater performances from their country because they are unable to access this content uh, physically uh, in Egypt. We have noted also that the platform uh, reached through the platform, artists and institutions reached new target groups. And these new target groups tend to be more on the two 
broad spectrums of age. So uh, uh, younger 